So welcome guys to another episode today. I have Mandy and this is really exciting for me because I met Mandy when I was traveling with my husband in Colombia. We were living there for about three months and she's been traveling for a while by that, at that point. And so we, our paths crossed. My husband went to the same university as her. So I was lucky to, to meet her when we were there. And today, so throughout her journey, which she will explain in this episode, she's become a business consultant, a LinkedIn expert, and a remote work advocate. She founded Make the Leap Digital to inspire and transform the next generation of professionals through educational resources, training, and consulting as she is on the mission to pave the way for remote work. So I'm so excited to have her here. I think we, she's gonna, she really sheds a lot of light on beliefs and practices that have uh, gotten her this far in her journey. So thanks again, Mandy, for being here. And uh, now we have the episode. Mandy, I am so excited that you're here. This is going to be such a great episode. Uh, so many women out there are wondering how to turn their corporate or work experience and package it into a thriving online business that allows them to live anywhere and everywhere and create lifestyles that they dream of. And you've done just that. And so thank you so much for being here. Well, Thank you so much for inviting me on this interview as well. Um, like super excited to be speaking with you today. I know we met one year ago already um, in Colombia. So that's like, it feels like a lifetime ago <laughs> since we were there. <laughs> yeah. Lots of world things. is different. <laughs> Everything's different. Yeah. Lots of things have changed. Yeah. And the world <laughs> has, has, uh, is so different right now. Um, but yeah, I'm happy, really happy to be here. So my story and hopefully you know <laughs> be an inspiration for some uh, some of your viewers so let's see amazing thank you so much so i'll kick things off on the lighter side so what's something you what did you have for breakfast this morning what did i have for breakfast this morning um i actually had a really slow morning <laughs> this Great. morning um because so it was easter this weekend um so i took the day off actually yesterday um i know most entrepreneurs so i'm a like a solopreneur i as i like to call it uh, I work by myself. I don't have a big team or anything. So it's really important to also schedule in some break times and holidays <laughs> to not mm -hmm. to help keep you sane and not work over hours. Um, so I've been uh, taking a day off yesterday, uh, enjoyed a really oh big breakfast or brunch with my family uh, and boyfriend. And um, so today I had just had a slow morning coming back into the office after a long weekend. Um, I uh, had for breakfast a smoothie actually. Um, which I have actually every morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds good. Um, yeah, so we, we, we bought this new blender. Uh, it's called the NutriBullet and it's a smart blender. Oh. Are you, are you familiar with it or is it something like... I, I, I'm not familiar with that one, but I, I know like Vitamix and like there's a whole bunch of them. Nutra, I, I, there's a bunch yeah. of them, but I haven't heard of this one. It's, uh, yeah, we've been using it for one or two months now every single day and every, for, a, for in the mornings and it just creates like um, the best smoothies ever and it's uh, with a Bluetooth, it, it's connected to your app on your mobile phone. So <laughs> it's like a good way to have a healthy, uh, healthy bal balanced uh, breakfast in the morning and uh, yeah, it's been my uh, breakfast this morning as well. Oh my God, I'm actually going to check that out. I think that's pretty brilliant. I want to check it. I can't believe it. Like, it's, well, I guess things are going that direction really like. Yeah. smart electronics so i shouldn't be that surprised <laughs> that's yeah. pretty amazing and amazing course, so uh, you know what i want to before i want to invite this conversation for now to be about you as a woman before we dive into make the leap digital mm -hmm. which is a whole other part an extension of who uh, and what you do um so as in detail or vulnerably as you feel comfortable can you share with us a little bit about your story how you grew up how did this whole journey unfold for you up until now Perfect. Yes, of course. Um, okay, so where should I start? Um, so I grew up in a small city. I'm not sure if it's even a city, small village, <laughs> called Spijkenisse. <laughs> um, it's called Spijkenisse. It's close to Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Um, so I grew up there and I really grew up in a family where most, like all of my family members are still, still living there now. <laughs> um, it's really like a town where if you are born there, you stay there. Uh, most of my oh. friends back then 
still have the same, you know, partners. Uh, they they work uh, as a like traditional jobs, um, and I was kind of a rebel. So <laughs> when I when I was eighteen, yeah, when I was eighteen, I went to university, and first I was still like in the you know living in that uh, same village, uh, surrounded by the same people. And then I had my, uh, so I did international business administration as a bachelor from a bachelor degree at the Erasmus University in Rotterdam. And that's when I got to, uh, got involved with a lot of people from different countries. And that's when I was like, oh my gosh, I just, I really have to get out of this like small town <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. vibe. So that's why I decided to move to Rotterdam um, to like live by myself uh, and to uh, enjoy my studies uh, to the fullest. So that's what I did. Um, moved there together with my twin sister uh, and best friend actually so we had uh, apartments together uh, for a couple of years did my bachelor over there uh, lots so lots of uh, experience going abroad as well so that's really where my love for travel mm. started um, mm -hmm. I've done some study trips to China to India like oh, wow. really places this the first time that I went outside of Europe I was always always like going to the same holiday, uh, summer holidays in summer with my family, like always to Spain or Italy, <laughs> uh, which is not too bad at all. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. But it's definitely not that far. <laughs> I understand what you mean. Exactly. So yeah, I just wanted to explore like different things. So um, yeah, that, those were my first abro experiences abroad. Um, and then I moved to, for my, my third year in university, I moved to Thailand as part of an exchange in Bang Bangkok. So I lived in uh, Bangkok for, uh, for six months uh, when I was about 22, 21. And it was for me the first time like living far away, uh, far away from my family. Also the first time uh, separated from my twin sister um, and just a whole new world open, open for me. And that's when I knew, okay, I just have to have like an international career. I want to explore more and travel more. more. And um, that's what I've been doing. So <laughs> I've been traveling quite a, quite a while, well, I would say. Um, so since then, I've, I took a gap year uh, after my bachelor degree, did a couple of months Central America. So uh, uh, that's where I really my love for salsa and Spanish language has born. And that's why, why how we met in Colombia. Yeah. <laughs> because that was my first <laughs> time in, in Colombia. And I just love the Latin, the Latin, uh, Latin atmosphere. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, and that's how I got into like traveling, um, the Latin culture as well. Uh, and then I did a master degree in marketing management. Um, mm. well, like right after you graduated from Rotterdam, you did a master's degree and then you left or? Um, no, so I did a bachelor, bachelor degree and then I took a gap year in where, during which I traveled um, to, to Central America. So really like for me, I wanted to learn some skills, uh, Spanish yeah. skills, uh, salsa, for example. I did some volunteer work as well, uh, those kinds of things. Um, yeah, so I did um, a board year as well during that gap year because um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Yeah, <laughs> I often sense. have that, that I'm like, I'm not sure what I want to do, so I just take a pause. <laughs> <It's laughs> and I just like the eternal question. It's like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Exactly, and then a good medicine for that is to travel. So uh, <laughs> it answered all of my questions in life. So that's what I did back then as well. I, so I traveled, uh, took a break of a year, and um, I wasn't sure what kind of master I wanted to do. Actually, fun fact, first I was thinking about doing accountancy. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Just because, because it made sense and people you know, told me uh, that it's good for, for job security and for the money. Yeah. Um, but then during the gap year, I just, uh, when I also started doing volunteer work in marketing, I just noticed I loved like the whole marketing and online sphere so much that I decided to do a master, a uh, master degree in that as well. So, so yeah, that's how I um, uh, entered into my master program. And um, that's, that's already four, five years ago. Wow. Time flies. <laughs> so that's five <laughs> years ago. Um, I did that for a year. And then I, when I graduated again, <laughs> didn't really know what to, what to do or look for in a career. So I decided to travel again. Um, went to South America this time. So first I did the central part, uh, um, Panama up yeah. to Mexico. And then uh, for this trip, I went from all the way from Chile to, uh, to, to Colombia. Wow. Um, yeah, so actually I wasn't planning to apply for any jobs yet. I was um, just thinking how, you know, if there's a way 
to combine work and travel, that would be perfect. Yeah. So I did start a travel blog at the time, but I had no idea how, how I could make money from, from that. <laughs> so as most people, I think uh, they would love to do that, but they, uh, m- most people don't know how where to start. So I was in the same position. I literally had no idea uh, where to start. I was just writing, my, writing down my experiences. Didn't make a single cent. Um, but luckily for me, I was approached by a recruiter on LinkedIn uh, who oh. happened to work at LinkedIn. So that's how I got a corporate job and, uh, in, uh, at LinkedIn in their European headquarters in Dublin, Ireland. And uh, yeah, I moved there right after the trip. So uh, back in 2016, I moved to Ireland, Dublin, to work for LinkedIn's uh, European headquarters. Wow. Um, it's actually a long, very long story. So maybe I, sh- I started uh, like way too long ago, but... Um, no, um, this is super interesting. Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah, so that was about two years ago that I, or four years ago now that I worked at LinkedIn. Um, Amazing job, amazing company, you know, world-class perks and benefits. Um, Also I was doing a rotational role. So it was, which was good for me because I wasn't still sure, you know, what exactly I wanted to do or for any career. So I did a couple of different rotations in recruitment, in marketing and in sales. And a couple of others um and then after two years i was living in dublin and then again the travel blog bug started itching um oh. <laughs> and that's when i decided to uh, to quit my job um without a plan so i didn't really have a plan i just knew there should be more out there uh, i also of course i don't now i had a backpack of skills at linkedin that i gained from working at, at linkedin um and i thought i probably you could find a way to work online right now and uh, travel the world while, while I'm at it. So that's what I did two years ago, actually uh, this month. So two years ago this month, I was in Bali um, because I quit my job, booked a ticket to Bali, didn't have a plan. And I was just figuring out what it was I was like doing. one way. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's so, amazing. Um, yeah. And two years later, here I am still. <laughs> I love how you phrase that. I got a backpack full of skills when you were at LinkedIn. It's true. I guess a lot of people do um, come out of corporate or, um, you know, work with a whole bunch of skills that sometimes you don't really realize that you pick up, but you really do. They become part of like how you work and who you are. So, yeah. So actually going back just a few steps, but as a young girl, what did you dream of becoming? Um, What did I dream of becoming? I actually never, so I never dreamt of becoming like a job title. I was never like, oh, I want to be um, a dentist, or I'm not sure if girls want to be a dentist, <laughs> or if I want to be <laughs> yeah. a business. There's some people that would, yeah, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I never, I never really had like, um, like a dream job in mind. The only thing that I remember from when I was young that I, so something that I really remember from when I was really young, I think I was in, I was like about eight years old, and a teacher in primary school she asked me like what do you want to do when you grow up and I was like I just want to travel the world <laughs> and wow. that's that's everything I said so um that's that's what I know that's been a huge passion of mine since since I was young so um so yeah oh that's fascinating because you definitely broke the mold from what it sounds like you were saying you're describing like what home sounded like what the people in your town were like and you definitely like you said you were the rebel and uh, you definitely broke a lot of boundaries there so have you, would you say that travel is like a medicine? Like whenever you're feeling a little bit like undecided or unsure, you'll like take a little trip and that kind of sets a reset for you? Yes, uh, definitely. But also I was in my, twen- I was in my 20s most of this time. <laughs> so um, now I am 29. I just turned 29 yeah, last month. Um, <laughs> and um, I have to say, so... In, during your like for me during my 20s this was the perfect for me the perfect time to do all of these things like I'm super happy that I um, decided to do all these things now in my 20s so that I don't have like the question uh, now going forward with what if if I would have you know quit that job or what if I would have traveled the world etc um, so back then it was for me the perfect decision and it always was medicine for me I think now at 29 and having already experienced all of that, I wouldn't Mm. like, it wouldn't be that much of medicine anymore because um, 
you know, at some point, I think it's also good to settle down at one place, which I'm <laughs> at, at, uh, at a stage in, in, uh, in my life. And also, you know, with all the things happening in the world right now, I'm super happy to be back back home and be surrounded with family and, uh, and friends and just cherish the memories that I have from my travels through pictures. Yeah, I can imagine that. But I'm actually curious because I feel like a lot of women could relate to your experience of like being at LinkedIn, this like cushy job, you have all the perks in the world, or maybe not even, but you still have like a, a dependable salary or, a de or something that you can depend on. So I'm curious to know, was there like one defining moment or when you realized that you were like, I need to leave? Like, was it a book, a person, a passage, or was it like slowly, like you said, you, you felt that travel bug, but was it like, what really made you take that leap in yourself? Because I've been there before and feeling that sense of like, ah, oh, almost trapped. <laughs> yeah, um, um, you're so, totally right. I think there's always like this one thing that, in Dutch you say, uh, that breaks the bucket kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I can imagine like it like it like opens the uh, the gates rather or like yeah the seal. yeah <laughs> yeah because I mean I so it wasn't like um, you know from one day I was really happy and then the next day I wasn't so I quit I mean I've been uh, I was so when I was working at LinkedIn uh, I had been thinking about you know what do I want in a career um, and in my life am I happy where I am right now and also what really helped me is having a five year career plan. So that's something that we used to do at LinkedIn as well. So uh, there's this, also, like, I really like that kind of framework where uh, there's a career pyramid. pyramid. Mm. And then, um, so we used to do this exercise where at the top of your pyramid, uh, that's your kind of five-year goal. And, um, you know, really think about what, what do you, where do you see yourself in five years? So I kind of created this pyramid for myself when I was 25. So when I just started at LinkedIn. And... I remember I, I was like, so, you know, you just asked me this question, what, what did you want to become? What did you want to become when you were young? And at that time, my manager asked the same thing. So what do you want to become at, in five years? Like, where do you see yourself? And I was really like, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I really started thinking again, where, you know, in terms of more job function, where do I see myself in five years? And that's when I um, figure, figured that I wanted to be, so I wanted to have the freedom and flexibility to work from wherever I feel happiest and most productive. So work remotely is now the term. Back then it wasn't like such big of a term yet. Um, and then I want to be an online entrepreneur because then I can have all the freedom and flexibility that allows me to be everywhere. So yeah, I actually sat down with my manager five years ago or four and a half years ago now, um, you know, talking about this career plan and uh, how I could uh, go to the top of my pyramid which was being an online entrepreneur in the remote work industry and um, I almost yeah in one year I'm, uh, I'm in that five years so <laughs> still have one year to go but I'm actually kind of already going uh, into that direction so uh, so yeah wow that's brilliant so actually just I'm just this is just me being curious but did you actually tell your boss that you wanted to do did you tell her the truth or were you, cause sometimes, you know, we're a little bit nervous to tell her boss, well, ideally I don't really picture myself here, but. No, um, I did. Yeah. I, did. Okay, so I, I actually have a big, I actually have a picture of it. And then like, he really helped me like lay out. So you have to lay out what type of skills do you need to get there? You know, what, what network do you need to get there? Like what kind of people do you know, I need to know. Um, but also like what type of roles do you need? Like, do you need to work in a type of role to get those skills or maybe you need a mentor to get those skills. So that really having that five year vision for myself in mind made me have the courage to make the leap um, because I had my long-term vision in mind instead of just thinking short term about, okay, what if I don't have a salary next year or next month? Because yeah. I, I knew that the skills I would gain through this journey would get me where I am. Uh, where I wanted to be in five five years. Wow, that's amazing, actually. That's well, that speaks a lot to the kind of leadership that's at LinkedIn, which is great, but also to the fact that you you really were honest with yourself in those moments about telling yourself or be, or saying what it is that you wanted. So that's yeah. powerful. And so I'm curious because like entrepreneurship, some people think it's like um, some people think it's really hard. Some people think it's easy. Did you grow up with entrepreneurial parents, or who were some of your biggest mentors? Um, well, so I would say not, not really. My dad just works at a traditional, uh, traditional office. Um, my mom though, she is a hairdresser, 
but she has her own hairdress salon. <laughs> so I guess yeah. she, she's an entrepreneur. And actually she's helped me a lot as well um, with uh, just uh, like small things in, uh, in business side. Like she isn't, she isn't really the like hard entrepreneur, but um, she's been working by her, uh, for herself and in the, as long as I can remember. Um, and actually, so going back to your point or to your question earlier about what was that thing that made you make the leap of faith was also my mom because uh she i remember so when i was working at linkedin i knew for for a year that i at some point i wanted to do this like wanted to make the step into uh remote work um but what really like made the uh yeah push the bucket (laughs) (laughs) um was um yeah it was a call from my mom and she i was actually in the middle of a promotion uh at linkedin and then i'm um i was calling with my mom and i wasn't just really uh, enthusiastic about about the new role and she just asked me why why would you take that role like why don't you just quit your job and try you know try your starting your own thing or like exploring remote work um so like that question from her triggered me into thinking yeah why not <laughs> why not <laughs> yeah why not now yeah yeah it's true yeah and i think that's maybe her entrepreneurial mindset as well with, um you know about being um a risk taker maybe like not uh, being risk averse that uh that gave me the courage as well to, uh, yeah, to start for myself. Which is beautiful because she supported you in that as well. Cause sometimes, you know, as moms, we don't want our kids to like go away. Uh, well, I'm not a mom, but I can imagine like, <laughs> <my mom. laughs> so it's like, you don't want your kids to leave and be far away. But at the same time, it's like, there's an element of supporting that individual that has. Yeah, that, so. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. She wasn't, she wasn't very excited about some uh you know going to colombia by myself and all that stuff but <laughs> that's a She's different like, just come back please uh, yeah <laughs> yeah it's amazing and actually i know that there's still quite some road ahead so this is probably the beginning of something of a new chapter let's say now that you're in the netherlands yeah um so would you do this all over again or and is there anything you change in that journey now that you're kind of like closing that chapter to the to the traveling mm-hmm. um no so I've always had since I I remember when I was I was in university, and um, they had this campaign called the I will statement campaign. So you could take a picture and then you could have a statement with I will whatever. Um, for me, my statement was I will only regret the things I didn't do. Mm. Um, so and that's my motto motto ever since. I n- I would never regret anything uh, I did. Only the things I didn't do. And so, like I said before as well, um, you know, I think I would regret it more if I wouldn't have tried. So even if I failed, let's say next, let, let's say next year or now, whatever, I apply again for a job because uh, it didn't succeed it. Um, I still tried and um, that's still success. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's really about how you define the sex, success for yourself as well. Um, if you regret things or, or not. But uh, yeah, luckily. And actually, that brings up a good point because I find that, like, recently I've had to like really dig deep into like what is success for me and what, how do I define it for myself. So I'm curious to actually understand a little bit about how you define success. Like, what, what would be your definition of success? Yeah, and I think that's a great question because, so I think, for example, let's say let's zoom back into um, when I was still a student in you know marketing. Uh, Master in marketing management, um, you know, the whole world is open for opportunities. Do I apply for jobs or start your own business or something like that? So I went the corporate route. Um, I had a job at one of the world's best technology companies, yeah. best world class uh, perks and benefits. You know, I had an um, in office uh, gym, uh, free food, um, even office massages. I used to <laughs> massage every other. <laughs> Every other, every other week, um, daily mes- uh, meditation uh, sessions, etc. I mean, which was great. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, you know, I also like a salary also, of course, great. Um, but at some point, you don't notice that, that all those things anymore. You don't notice the, you know, the salary adding up in your bank account. Um, yeah. Also, the daily meditation sessions when you have, uh, so I was in sales. So when you have a sales target to hit, those meditation sessions are also <laughs> um, <laughs> not, 
not attempting not anymore. that meditating <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um so you need a lot more meditation sessions to uh get your core <laughs> to like relief <laughs> yeah especially during these times <laughs> um so yeah, so back then when I was a student, I thought that success, like having, uh, you know, the corporate job, having a good salary, uh, having all those benefits. Um, but then when I was in that position, I was like, well, actually, I think success is more, um, you know, how happy are you in your career and your life? And that's actually mm-hmm. the only, that's actually the only thing that matters. Uh, are you happy? So, but also happiness, of course, involves um, can you support yourself financially? Um, can you do the things you want to do? Uh, so that also, of course, uh, until some financial um, uh, in, like impact as well. I can't just travel and do nothing. Um, but um, yeah, for me, success is really, um, can I do every day? Can I do what I love? And can I also inspire other people uh, mm-hmm. by doing what I, what I do? Um, and, uh, yeah, can I, uh, can I earn my bread with it? And that's, uh, that's yeah. it. <laughs> that's beautiful. I actually really like, it's true because I've done that work for myself too. And even just like accepting that for me, success wasn't like the, you know, the things that I could buy or like the positions or the amount of money or yeah, it's, it's a big realization as well. And something that, um, takes a bit of digging. And yeah. so when you, when we look at success, when you look at like your story so far, because you're still young, I know. Um, what do you, what would you say like is the quality or the word that you would attribute your success to, or maybe it's just like, what would you attribute your success to is basically what the question is. Um, I think what's, yeah, what brought me where I am today and which is in my definition successful is, um, having a a growth mindset or my mindset. I mean, maybe for some others, um, I wouldn't be a success because it's their mindset, right? So, um, but for me, um, I really love learning like new things. So that's why like when I went to university and exploring all these new cultures, like I love exploring those new cultures. And now as well in my, like in my business, I just love like diving into new things. You know, we just talked before this interview, we talked about my website, which I made all by myself. Like I didn't have a clue how to make websites. <laughs> before I started for myself but I just love the fact that I can now like build like a super I love like I love the design like not to brag like, <laughs> I love I love but it's beautiful yeah <laughs> yeah and I just think that's like that's amazing as well and um like just to learn and like some things go well like my website for example but uh yeah some things uh, like some projects uh don't go that well but still I learn a lot so um I think it's having that growth mindset of like not being afraid of failures um of uh you know of doing anything wrong but really seeing those failures as opportunities Mm -hmm. to learn and to grow um made me uh yeah made me where i am today and um yeah successful in my terms yeah yeah no and and i I think even just in in general because like you said it's beautiful to see someone that's happy that's like living out just wanting to grow and like evolve into you know, their highest potential. So actually you brought up setbacks, which is obviously a trying time in anyone's life or career. So how have you moved through setbacks when you're faced with like adversity in the past? How have you moved through it? Like, do you have any practices or principles that help you keep going? Um, yeah. Um, so let's talk about a setback. Um, for example, um, so I was in Colombia, so we actually met in Colombia uh, mm-hmm. last year. Uh, so I used to live in Colombia for five months last year, in 2019. And um, so I was working on my business kind of from scratch again. So like, first of all, when you work for yourself and you're an entrepreneur, it's like always like there's ups and yeah. downs. <laughs> ups and downs. <laughs> so don't expect everything to go like, like this because then um, probably entrepreneurship is not for you. <laughs> Um, so like, um, and also in terms of, so there's ups and downs and also you won't have it right from the start. So you won't have a business idea from day one. And that will be like the perfect business idea with the perfect products, with the perfect customers. Like Mm. it's all like adapting, uh, and, and just adjusting to, uh, to the moment. Um, so Back in Colombia, when I returned to the Netherlands, that was summer 2019, last year. And um, I was actually feeling 
this misaligned with my with my business like mission and where where I was at. So that really demotivated me. Um, so really at the time um, I came back in July, I felt demotivated to work. I didn't feel aligned. Uh, mm-hmm. Plus there were also some personal things going on in my family with uh, my grandma, for example. She had a uh, she was di- diagnosed with cancer at the time. Yeah. Um, so that was something really like, yeah. also, especially if you're a solopreneur that doesn't have a team uh, working for them, it can be really hard to also then still work, you know, work 24, 24 hours or eight yeah. hours a day yeah. uh, and invest all of your time in your business. So what my advice would be, uh, and what I did as well, is to just take, take a step back um, and reflect and um, allow yourself some time. Yeah. And that's what I did. So I actually didn't work for a whole of August just to, uh, just to feel, you know, get back my, my motivation, uh, to spend some more time with my family as well, because I was just away for, uh, for five months. Um, so just really investing time in things that matter most to me personally. Um, and not being afraid. I think that's, again, ties back into the growth mindset. Mm-hmm. Not being afraid of what will happen to my business or what happens, you know, if I lose all my clients or my income. Um, because I think that like what you throw out yeah. in, uh, in, uh, the nature <laughs> kind of comes back and that's what happened then as well. So, um, um, so I took the month of August off and actually since September, I've had like my best months ever just uh, because things just came to me. Uh, and I really think that happens when you, uh, when you like go back and reflect and, uh, feel more aligned with what you do. So, um. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a powerful thing you said there, because I think a lot of us think, oh, you know, it, we give up versus like really going back to some of the things that really matter, which is something you said, which is taking that personal time to take care of ourselves yeah. so that we feel rejuvenated instead of quitting. It's like, maybe you don't need to quit or give up, but yeah. just take that break. Like let yourself relax. Yeah, exactly. Care of yourself. Yeah. Actually, uh, so a quote that I really love and I put that even on my desktop whenever I feel in this moment or if, if when I feel in this way is um, uh, learn to rest. Uh, if you feel demotivated, learn to rest, not to quit. Mm. Because I think so many, especially entrepreneurs or you know, people that work for themselves um, might be tempted to, when they feel this way to, yeah, to feel like obliged, <laughs> like yeah. they have to, uh, that they have to quit, but no, you don't have to. You can also just take some time um, and uh, things will fall into place eventually. Oh my God, it's so true. And actually speaking of like taking time to rest, what are some ways that you take care of yourself or stay sane? Or do you have any self-love rituals that you would want to <laughs> share? <laughs> yes, of course. Um, yeah, actually, so uh, I'm, not, I'm not the best, uh, best in these things, I would say, but still I try to keep doing my like daily practices, uh, like mindset practices, I like to call them. Um, so I have, I do have a gratitude journal every, that I write in every day. Um, I try to write, write in every day. Um, but also like, that's why I say try. I don't think it should be a goal in itself to do this. You you have to do it every day um, because I've done it as well in the past. And then it feels Mm. like something you have to do. But for me, so whenever it feels right, I just take my gratitude journal uh, and just write down like the things that I'm grateful for every day. Mm-hmm. And that just really helps to, you know, get into the positive mindset, see the wins, uh, like small and large as well. Because I think it can be really tempting to just focus on the negative things that are happening or um, the things that are going wrong. Yeah. Um, but when you really write those down, um, like sometimes I have mornings that I'm writing like full pages and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have like so much to be thankful for. Or so many yeah. things that went well, but I d- didn't even realize until I wrote them down. Um, so that's something that really helps me to be in a positive mindset as well, to, care, to take care of, my, of myself. Um, so okay. that's one thing. And then another thing is um, meditation. So that's something that I've been doing for quite some years now, I'd say um, oh, really? almost every day. Um, yeah. Wow. So do you know the, um, the app Headspace? I love Headspace. It's how I got started. It's, um, just makes it so easy. Yeah. 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 I love I it as really well. Love yeah. It. yeah. So I use that as well every day. Yeah. So you know what, before we jump into like actually talking a little bit about make the leap digital, which has come up quite a bit. So I think for people it would be nice to understand a little bit more about it. 
I just like to close off on like on two things. So throughout this process so far as a, as a woman, what were some of the things that you discovered about yourself? Some of the things that, that you were like, I didn't know I had that or like, yeah, just um, that you discovered. I think, yeah, that's a funny question. I think um, one thing that pops into mind is that uh, something that I didn't know about myself is that I am actually an entrepreneur. Like, I don't like to call myself that way sometimes, but I'm really an entrepreneurial. Like, I love to just like see, I, I see business opportunities and I just love to like jump on them and work on them. On them. And I didn't like expect myself to be like an entrepreneurial minded mm -hmm. person or woman. Um, you, you know, like I said, I quit my job at LinkedIn, but I didn't have a plan. So I wasn't planning to, you know, I, I want to start my own business because I'm an entrepreneur. But throughout this process, I just noticed that, uh, yeah, that I might be, <laughs> I might be yeah. one. Um, and uh, that I just love, uh, you know, building, uh, building new things. So that's something, uh, yeah, that's, um, that I discovered about myself. That's amazing. And then I guess to close off on the last thing, actually, because I think what you're saying is, is beautiful, is that, that chance to discover yourself. So, and there's always that opportunity for growth that you're saying, and that keeping that mind um, open and adaptive. So what are some of the things that you're, or maybe it's just one thing, that you're currently working or working to improve within yourself? Um, also, great question. <laughs> yeah, you're well prepared. Um, <laughs> Um, but something that I'm working on to, to, well, actually, I've been working on to improve that for the past couple of years <laughs> since I knew I had it, um, which I think a lot of women struggle with. And that's why it's maybe good to touch upon in this, uh, in this interview, because I know you have a lot of uh, female re readers yeah. or viewers, um, which is imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with it, I guess. Yeah. Um, so at, fir at first, I wasn't familiar with the, with the term until I read the book uh, Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg. Yes. Um, yes, that book, like... So good, yeah. Super good. Really kick-started my career. I, I often say, like, it's the reason why, you know, why I, I was, um, you know, one, one of the reasons why I got into LinkedIn, for example, or now I'm an entrepreneur because I am more self-aware because of this imposter syndrome. So for those of you, for, mm. for those of you who don't know what it is, it's, you know, having this feeling of insecurity despite evident success. Um, so, if, so it's mostly for people that are successful uh, and mainly women as well um, that uh, feel this kind of imposter syndrome. So in feeling of insecurity, um, even though if they're successful because they always compare to the best, for example. So for myself as well now, uh, but I've had, had this for the last couple of years, I don't think it's something that's, you can ever recover from, but it's something that you can learn to cope with or to yeah. deal with. Um, but yeah, especially when you're, you know, um, you're uh, in your having your own business and you want to grow, you're always compare yourself like to the next person like ahead of you. <laughs> always. Yeah, I feel <laughs> exactly. you. Yeah. So um, this can be like if you don't uh, acknowledge this that you have. Like that it's imposter syndrome it can be really damaging for your mindset for your motivation yeah. uh you know it can uh, it can cause you to quit whatever you're doing mm -hmm. um so just be aware of that you know that's that little uh voice speaking to your head that's not you know that's not <laughs> true <laughs> um but it's, it's, yeah but yeah it's still something that i'm working on so sometimes i'm still like um you know um uh, something happened and I'm, I only see like the things that could be better mm -hmm. and then I just rem remember okay Mindy <laughs> just like write down like in your gratitude journal the things that went well uh, small wins and then I remember okay um, it's just the imposter syndrome sneaking up again yeah wow that's a powerful one it is true I've, I've spoken with a lot of women that struggle with that and and I myself as well is just like feeling like you know there's always that comparison there's always that you're it's just the level's always so much higher than you, even though you know that you're making steps and strides and, and you're doing, and you're putting out good work. So yeah. I, I feel it's true. It's a, it's a crazy thing. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I want to switch hat. I want to switch hats now, I guess, and to make the leap, which is, has just recently become digital. So before it was make the leap and now it's become make the leap digital, if I'm not mistaken. Um, well, so I want to go ahead. 
so yeah so my company is called make the leap digital um but it's from my instagram account which is make the leap um so maybe to just tell a bit of a background story around the name exactly <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's, I just created the Instagram account, make the leap, um, to share my journey of, you know, so I posted, um, and post on LinkedIn when I quit my job and I just said, Hey guys, quit my job at LinkedIn. I don't have a plan, um, but I'm going to Bali and you can follow me here on this Instagram account because I felt more, um, um, open to share photos there of traveling traveling and stuff so i so it was my instagram account and i just shared my story there so if for those of you who uh, want to follow me it's make the leap underscore and you can basically watch back my whole uh, journey from uh, from corporate two years ago to like being now a solopreneur um and then after a couple of months when i got my first few clients as a uh, for my own business uh, i just uh, made it my own business make the leap digital so two years ago now Wow. And so actually one of the things that I want to actually go into more detail is how you went, how did that process look like from actually going from LinkedIn to what it is today? Like, I think you'd mentioned before that it started as a blog and then somehow you gained your first client. Like, how was that? Um, and then how is the mission? What's the mission of the company going forward now? Yeah, uh, of course. So, um, so yeah, like I just said, it was first just an Instagram account. Um, and so I went to Bali, uh, so April, uh, this time two years ago, um, didn't know if I wanted to become like start my own business or work for a company remotely. I just wanted to have the freedom and flexibility to work, uh, to work from anywhere. Yeah. Um, and when I was in Bali, I was, I just started working from co-working spaces. Um, so there's a great co-working space, Dojo Bali. You might be familiar with it. Um, but there's a lot of entrepreneurs and freelancers and small business businesses working from that co-working space. And um, I just went there just to uh, work on my skills. So I was doing some online courses, um, but I still didn't know like, you know, what I was about to do. I just wanted to improve my skills. Um, but then in the meantime, I learned, I, I connected with entrepreneurs and freelancers in the co-working community. And that's how um, yeah, we just started talking about what do you do? Um, and they asked me, of course, about my background. Um, and that's how I uh, met my first client uh, there in Bali uh, who needed help with her, with her LinkedIn. So it was a st startup company uh, and she actually reached out to me. And I didn't have a website. I didn't have like a <laughs> social media. <laughs> crazy. I didn't have a business registration. I didn't have anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, I closed my first client and that was actually like, a, like almost a full month salary for like three times less the hours <laughs> for that like, one, yes. one project. And I was like, what is this real? Is this true? <laughs> do, like, do people do this? Um, and that's like, like where it started. So I came back uh, and that's when I subscribed my, my business or registered my business um, only after I got my first client. <laughs> Um, yeah, so my first client was really helping like, uh, you know, uh, or since then I've been helping businesses, uh, to kickstart and grow their online business through LinkedIn. So I've been doing, uh, um, you know, how to build your online brand on LinkedIn as a freelancer, solopreneur or small business owner. Um, how do you, uh, market yourself or market your products and your services? Uh, through advertising or through uh, sales strategies on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing that for like, I still do that now. So I've been doing that for two years now. Um, but my, always my longer term mission since the beginning was to help people like, like my, I really believe for me that the future of work is remote. Uh, like that people should have the freedom and flexibility to work from anywhere. So LinkedIn was for me the vehicle to help people go from, to help people work online because um, even when I worked at LinkedIn, uh, I never saw a client face to face, but I was doing all of my, you know, uh, sales uh, online, uh, mm -hmm. which led to like more than $300,000 in sales uh, in one year. Fantastic. Um, yeah, but I didn't see a single client and that was still when I was working at LinkedIn, right? So I was like, I should help other people like also have the strategy in place so that they can also work uh, online and leverage the LinkedIn platform um, to have this lifestyle. Um, 
so yeah, my, my bigger life, my bigger mission behind uh, whole LinkedIn was uh, to help people uh, create a lifestyle of freedom and flexibility. Um, so uh, yeah, so they can work from, from anywhere. Um, so I've been doing that mainly through LinkedIn and now uh, I'm also focusing more on, uh, on companies. How can companies work, uh, work remotely or digitally transform their business so that everyone uh, can work from anywhere. Um, That's such a powerful thing because um, I, I remember you and I were talking about this as well because I mean, not that we're intentionally trying to bring up COVID, but this is a time when companies are rediscovering what that even looks like and their options in order to keep up with, with their missions and their, and their clients. So I can imagine that this is a very thriving time for you to be exploring this area. Um, so yeah, yeah. So is, that, is that kind of why it came about or is this because you had talked about remote work, but it's true that you were talking more about like solopreneurs, but now, um, yeah, this seems to be. Yeah, no, so it's, it's fun. Like most, as, as you might've heard from the rest of my story, most things happen to me like, um, and I just, I don't know, like I also really believe in, uh, I think it's uh, like, do you know the word serendipity? Yes. You know, like that there's opportunity, but like you also have to grab that opportunity to yeah. like get that luck. Like, <laughs> so serendipity, okay. serendipity is actually uh, like luck, but also it's more of an opportunity and grabbing that opportunity, exploring that. Um, so for me, serendipity has been like a, a huge factor, I think, in all of my success as well. Um, so now with the remote work, um, I, so that's been my longer term mission since the beginning of Make the Leap Digital, helping like businesses and people work remotely uh, in a small sentence. Um, and back just before the, the COVID outbreak, um, one and a half months ago, I decided to take a week off uh, again to reflect and recharge and think about like my alignments and my mission, etc. And that really involves uh, remote work and how I could bring that back into my business or more into my business. Um, and that's when like all the worlds shifted to remote work. <laughs> <laughs> We're listening, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it, it, like this little serendipitous moments, like, yeah, it's just something that I feel for me, it was like a push deck uh, of confidence. Like maybe I wouldn't have dived in, do it, into it so much without that push, but I saw that push of like serendipity of like, okay, remote work is like, calling me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm grabbing it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, but not, like now still, I'm still at the beginning of this journey again. No idea how that will work out. So um, i curi curious to see, um, yeah, how that, uh, like how that part of my business will evolve. Yeah, I'm actually really curious as well because um, it's true that for some years, remote work has already been on the, on the radar and a lot of people were considering. So I'm also curious to follow along in your journey with that. So actually, I've got two more questions for you um, just on this. And the first one is, as you were transitioning into this, what were some of the biggest questions or doubts you had running through your mind that you were like, because I feel like I want to point these out because I feel like sometimes these doubts are not exclusive to ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these doubts are so, I don't want to say common, but they're shared. So I'm curious yeah. to see and question some of the questions that you had asked yourself and some of the doubts that could have become debilitating, but at the end of the day, you just had this mindset, which you've kind of shared with us that allowed you to keep going. Yeah, um, great question. So I think my doubt, my first doubt, you mean, so you mean like for me going from corporates to starting my own business, right? Yeah, and even now, like this journey now, which you're transitioning and you're kind of investigating a whole other concept, but it's like this consistency of, this constant evolution of your business. Yeah. Um, so I think first, uh, first doubt is always like, can I do this? Do I have the skills? Like, who am I to teach about remote work or teach about LinkedIn or anything like that? Um, but what I learned, so for me, you know, teaching about LinkedIn, for example, was a more comfortable step because I worked at the company before. So obviously I had more of the expert status. Um, yeah, that I have with other topics maybe. Um, but I figured out like, so I did a lot of research around remote work as well in the past month, uh, obviously, because now like I'm switching to like a new area for it. Like it's not new for me. I've been exploring it for two years, 
uh, firsthand as well, but like more diving into the research studies that have been uh, have been done as well. And actually, like, so at the beginning, I also thought, like, who am I to teach about remote work? Um, but as I started like looking into it and researching it and talking to other experts about this uh, topic, um, and also sharing my experiences, mm -hmm. so I think um, what's also really helped me is my mindset of like it's not about the destination, but it's about the journey. And that's why I also shared my journey of Make the Leap because I wasn't there yet, but I wanted to share my journey and actually sharing that journey like now as well with the remote work. So I share like what I find, I share that with my social networks, et cetera. And that's how you get seen as an expert or, you know, um, uh, uh, that you get that status that you feel more comfortable as well to teach those things. So um, I've been asked now in, in expert panels uh, to write blog posts uh, about this topic, which I, I didn't feel an expert in a month ago, for example. <laughs> um, so brilliant. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's really being, um, yeah, uh, being vulnerable and daring to show that and just show your journey and not just the destination, you know, don't show just the result, but like how you got there as well and help others um, along the way. Um, and that will, that will help you as well. Mm, I'm sure that's going to resonate with so many people because it's true. We just kind of want to look perfect and like it's all packaged up and we know it all, but like, do we ever really get there in life? You know what I mean? It's kind of like yeah. a never ending question. Exactly. And I think that's like the whole journey part of like when you're not there yet, that's what resonates most with people. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, sharing that piece as well is uh, super interesting, I think. That's true. And then you're right, there's an, a huge element of vulnerability in that, being like, you know what, it's true, I don't know it all, but I can figure it out. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, also, also for you, like, I'm, I'm not sure about you, but for me, I love following people that are not, like, there yet and, like, just share their, like, experiences and the lessons with me um, and then I can learn from their, their mistakes or, for example, like um, those kind of things um, that, that just makes it a lot more fun to, <laughs> to follow others as well. <laughs> it's true, it's true. It, it feels more collaborative, like it's like we're all in this kind of together. So it's true, it's beautiful. Yeah. So actually, this was the last question I wanted and, uh, and then we'll just wrap up with a few um, questions on how people can follow you and, and go. So what's the best thing about being a female entrepreneur? The best thing about being a female entrepreneur, um, so maybe also a background story <laughs> yeah. here, because I know uh, you focus on women, and I like that's also like something that I'm like one of my passions, like supporting women, especially also like in corporate and entrepreneurial um, uh, environments. Um, so when I used to work at LinkedIn, for example, um, one thing that I didn't feel comfortable in it was working in so I was working in a sales environment I was in a sales role selling to salespeople with uh, with a sales team like salesmen um, so working in an environment really uh, increased my imposter syndrome that we talked about <laughs> um, so it wasn't a comfortable environment for me to yeah. work in and now being an entrepreneur I just feel so more like myself and uh, you know free of, of all these um, external distractions or like people like talking you down or anything um, mm. so it just gives me so much more confidence uh, and also I think it's super important to surround yourself with other inspiring entrepreneurial women um, yeah. who've walked the path so um, I think that's something that's that's encourages me to believe okay you know women can do this even though I'm mm. like by myself um, if you surround yourself with the wrong people, so like, let's say you're surrounding yourself with all men saying, no, you're just, what are you doing? You know, you're just, uh, yeah. you're just one woman, you can't do it. Um, then you most probably will believe it. So surround yourself with the right people, uh, with inspiring women. And um, um, yeah, like uh, for me, I learned uh, as a solo, uh, solo entrepreneur and traveler, being a woman alone, like uh, you can do so much uh, you're so powerful so um wow. yeah oh that's so brilliant because it's true um one of the questions that i like to ask sometimes is that sometimes when we do different things we like have to put different personalities on and i think that's part of an evolution also is becoming like you know feeling comfortable in our own skin so it's it's great that um this journey into entrepreneurship has allowed you to just feel like yourself and just 
explore that and express that. So I'm really happy yeah. to hear that. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> so just to conclude now, so is there any content out there that you would recommend that really inspires you that you think could be helpful to the viewers or people listening? Um, well, so in terms of, uh, in terms of mind content or like maybe books and stuff that help me as well along this way, I could share some as well. Um, in terms of my content, so um, uh, I've also documented my journey. So like I said, I doc documented my journey from the beginning. So if in some way that could inspire you, help you in your journey, um, you can look at my LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. So my name, Mandy, Mandy Franz, with S and Z at the end. Um, and there I've written a couple of blog posts about my journey going uh, from corporates to uh, working remote as well and uh, working for myself. Um, and then I have a couple of blog posts as well on my website. Um, and of course my Instagram account, make the leap. Yeah. Um, so those, yeah, some, some, those are some content pieces that I wrote myself. Um, and then for, you know, some, maybe some other content pieces, some books and stuff that I yeah. would recommend and help me. Um, I actually read a lot of, a lot of books. Um, but in the last year I just couldn't find the motivation, uh, because I think I've been switching to Dutch now. So I've been reading a lot of English books yeah. uh, in the last years. So some books that I think are great are Sapiens. Um, mm. And uh, it's a good book. Yeah. Thinking Fast and Slow as well. I think those are books are just like more in general, um, you know, of understanding like the world <laughs> um, are just uh, super interesting to read, but they are tough to read as well. Yeah. Sapiens mm. is, yeah. It's a thick one, but it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, so the book that helped me kickstart this journey as well, or like the first introduction into this whole remote work world, as most people probably have, is uh, The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm reading a book called Ikigai. Are you familiar with that one? Actually, I'm not. No. I have it actually right here. Oh. It's, it's in Dutch, though. It's this oh, one. It actually looks like, su it's su wow. Is that <laughs> Japanese though? Yeah, so it's a oh, Japanese okay. word. Um, so this one, this, this is the first book in Dutch that I've been reading in the past years. <laughs> it's usually in English, but I just love like, it's like super like nice to read, like a lot faster, um, but it's really about how to find your passion or your thing, what wakes you up in the, mor in the morning. Um, so it's about like four things, four areas. Yeah. Uh, one is, so, like I'd say, so one is about um, writing down all the things you love. Mm -hmm. um, another part is writing down all the things that you are good at. Mm -hmm. And then the other, uh, other part is, uh, what does the world need? And then, what would people pay for? So if you combine all those things, that's your ikigai, like your thing that that keep me they say so this book says that uh, allows you to live a um, product or a uh, happy and healthy lifestyle i'm gonna look into that and i'll also share it in the notes so that people can actually uh because i think that that's brilliant actually the way it's broken down that's great yeah yeah so yeah. i've been just reading that now and i just uh, love that as well so it might help some people that are just on this journey as well trying to figure it out exactly yeah <laughs> so mandy you mentioned a couple of times how people can find you um, so is the best way to just follow your journey through Instagram or through your website? Like what's the best way for people to find you and, um, just continue? Yeah. Um, so I'd say, you know, always feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, so I'm most active on LinkedIn, um, just by my first name, last name, Mandy Franz, um, just include a personal note. And then I know that you are, uh, that I, uh, that you're, that you've seen this interview as well. Um, and then uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram as well on make the leap underscore. Yeah. And I'll put that all in the notes so that people can uh, easily find you. And so just, um, is there one message, if you had to give one message to the world, what would it be? Um, I think I'm going to stick to my business name <laughs> <laughs> because I think that's such an important message, but, um, I really believe that you can have any dream life you want if you, Number one, decide you want it. Mm -hmm. And then number two, make the leap of faith. So, wow. you know, whatever it is that you want, first decide that you want to have it and then just go out there, make the leap of faith and, uh, and do it.
Oh, this is so good. <laughs> oh my God. So Mandy, you do some incredible work. Um, just browsing through your website even recently. And when I met you, it's just, uh, you're so inspiring. You're such a go-getter. You have so much energy and hunger for life. It's, it's really inspiring. Is there anything that the viewers can do to help you in any way? Is there anything that, um, yeah, that you're working on right now that you'd like people to, to support you in? Uh, thank you, first of all, so much for your kind words. And I really love meeting you as well. I always love to meet like fellow inspiring ambitious entrepreneurial women um, and of course like one thing like, you could do to help me is uh, you know just spread the message feel free to if you have any key takeaways uh, share share with your channel share with your network uh, feel free to tag me in your messages as well and always feel feel free to reach out to me uh, on, uh, on LinkedIn or Instagram and happy to uh, further chat from there wow Mandy you're killing it <laughs> <That's> awesome <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no, thank you so much for being here. I'm definitely super inspired and just excited to continue following your journey. And uh, like I mentioned before, I'll leave all her details down below. And thank you so much again for sharing your story with us, for simply being you and uh, for making all this magic. It's, uh, it's truly inspiring. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Guys, what an episode. We were so lucky. Mandy shed so much light on some of the beliefs that she has, some of the leaps of faith that she's taken, and just the all-around journey that she's had to getting to where she is. Clearly someone that um, had big dreams and just went after them, to be honest. But you can really feel that from her. So like she mentioned in the chat, so feel free to follow her on LinkedIn or uh, on Instagram. So I'll leave her details on the side and just on the notes below. And so I'm excited. I think the viewers are also quite excited to see where you'll end up, Mandy. And uh, yeah, we wish you a lot of luck and a lot of love on this journey. Until next time, friends.